Being raised in a strict, closed-off culture has its perks. I felt safe, loved, and wanted. I was raised in a polygamous family with two mothers. The smell of fresh baked bread and warm cookies through the house. And a lot of siblings that also doubled as my best friends. I married my high school sweetheart at a young age, and together we had ten children. I thought I was repopulating the planet by myself. (laughs) We had a great life. We planted gardens. We bottled fruit. We sang. We danced. We loved each other. One day, a tyrant moved into our community and took over our town through religious fair tactics. He systematically destroyed our community. He tore our lives apart. We lost our jobs, our stability, and all sense of community. The community that I had always loved became a community I didn't recognize. Because of that, my husband and I packed up our children and our lifetime of belongings and we moved away. We moved away to a new town with new faces. We enrolled our children in a new school, surrounded by people that didn't understand what we had been through. We lived in that town for four years. During that time, that tyrant continued to destroy the community I had come from, sending more families away. He tried to annihilate us, but he could not take away our red mountains and our beautiful sunsets. And he certainly could not destroy the love we had for each other. One day, my husband told me he wanted to go home. I truly never thought I would go back. But you see, the red dirt flows through my veins. The tall mountains give me strength. I needed my people. I needed my home to rebuild a community where people could come and feel safe and loved again. And so we returned. One of the main reasons I was able to go back is due to the fact that I had become a crime victim advocate, a person who stands by the side of someone who has been a victim of crime. No one ever plans on being a victim of crime, but when you are, you want an advocate by your side. I worked with an organization formed by a group of women who had either lived or come from polygamy. We work with hospitals, police, and support agencies. We are on call 24-7, 365. We helped fathers that were excommunicated, mothers that had had their children ripped from them. They needed support and understanding, not scoffed at or ridiculed because of their religious history. One night as a crime victim advocate, I received a call. A film crew, a news crew, had brought a mother into town and wanted to film her getting her children back. When they didn't capture the footage they wanted, they left her abandoned on the side of the road. She found her way to the back lawn of the home in which her children were being kept. She was cold, she was hungry, and she was weeping for her baby. I showed up with food and blankets in hand, and more importantly, hope, understanding, and a hand to hold. We stayed on that lawn through that night and most of the next day before she saw her children. No fanfare, no cameras rolling, just a tumble of little bodies as they threw themselves in their mother's arms. They had been told she had abandoned them. She didn't want them anymore. She spent the next three years sitting on the floor with them, playing with them, loving them, reminding them what it felt like to have a mother's love. No one ever plans on being a victim of crime, but when you are, you want a crime advocate to be by your side. That is why I do this work. The work of relationships, connecting, and bridge building. You see, at one time, 
I was that mother. I had been a victim of crime, and I needed an advocate by my side. Someone to hold my hand and help me through the process. My crime victim advocate is who stood behind me and was the driving force to me becoming the first elected female mayor of Hilldale, Utah. See, sometimes it's your turn, and sometimes it's my turn. There's a little of you in me, and there's a little of me in you. We're just more alike than we are different. Thank you. Thank you.